What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week, and only this week, he's the VR of Stations, Dave. It's Dave Station VR. Wow, okay, that's a good intro. Yeah, I it like came it. to me. VR Last of second. Stations. Dave. VR of Stations. Yeah. yeah, that's me. I'm Dave. And who am hey, I? everybody. You are Brian Paul from Without Parole. And every week on Why We Love PlayStation yeah. VR, we dip into the PSVR archive. Actually, this is just, you guys know, this is Dave and I. Jeremy, we're all caught up. All right, cool. Yeah. 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 We dip into the PSVR archive. We pull out some games, uh, pluralized at random, and then uh, we talk about them way too long. We dip into, uh, we dip into, we don't dip. We dip, we dip, we dive. We dive deep into this stuff. Or I mean, you deep do into usually, it. But I'm going to do, I'm going to do a deep dive as well. Excellent. But we got three games this time, so that's a big... Three games. Yeah. Three games for the thing. price of one, and basically, it's a theme show. Because today is what day? Uh, the spookiest day of the year. It's spooky. It's the Very greatest spooky. day of the year. It's Halloween. Halloween. And so we decided to do something a little bit different. Yeah. What do we decided to do, David? We are taking some games from all around the world that you can't get in America. So uh, you might have to dig a little bit for these, make a new account, whatever it is. But um, these are either from the Hong Kong or Japanese stores. Um, luckily, they are all mostly two out of three are in English. Yeah. You can play through. Yep. And, um, and they're all fairly cheap as well. I think that's the very important part of this. And did I say they're horror games? It's Halloween. They're horror games. So. And more importantly, you said all over the world, but they are Asian horror games. Asian horror games. Right. Like The Ring, but games. Yep. And yeah. And games that, again, unavailable on the North American PlayStation Store. Yeah, so you're going to have to go hunting, but it's worth it. It for is. For all these games. There are treasures to find on these treasure hunting maps. I would suggest everybody have multiple accounts. It's good to be able to find stuff from anywhere yeah uh, maybe we, maybe real briefly uh, people ask us all the time how do you get these games youtube tutorials look up how to create ja a japanese account yeah there's stuff all over the place it's very straightforward and then you just buy psn cards from whatever region you want um there's multiple websites i use this one cgm yeah that's, probably um, one. that's what i use i usually so. use play asia play asia is not doesn't always yeah. have what i'm looking for but they're my first stop yeah, so there's multiple sites out there, and you just buy the amount that you need for the game that you want, yep. and, and it you're never in. seems to be quite enough because once you add tax and like all that stuff, a it's buck over, a buck below, yeah. but you got to finagle it a little. So little I've bit. always got like five to ten extra dollars sitting in every yeah, account for sure. Yeah. All right, Dave. What's the first uh, Asian import horror game that we want to talk about? We're going to be talking about pupil wandering. Dude, a wandering pupil. A wandering pupil. Their eyes are all over. Lazy the place. eye. It's, it's a lazy eye game. Insanity. It's a, although pupil wandering. Brings to mind only one eye wandering, which is really weird when you look at Very, it. The other one's be, spot on. This one's all over the place. That, in real life, that would be almost as scary as what's happening in this game. People wandering, if you saw someone like that. What do you think's happening in this game? So you are, um, it, it appears you're part of a Chinese family. Mm. Something has gone down, yeah. um, and it's a bit mysterious, of course. And you're kind of wandering through this dark house, uh, a little bit of inside-outside areas. You might be a pupil wandering. It seems like maybe you were a student. A student of a some student. sort. Yeah. yeah. And um, you've got a paper lantern to light your way, and otherwise it's very dark. Which, time out. This is my favorite thing about this game. It's really cool. It's just a cool mechanic. Two move controllers, and one of them just carrying a lantern on a stick, like and a you paper can lantern. Swing it around. It's fun. Great yeah. physics. Yeah, no, there's something very cool about that. I like that. It's like, yeah. you know, that's probably the only reason I like VR fishing games is because I'm like, <laughs> you get it really to... feels like I have a yeah, real rod. For sure. Yeah. Uh, so what are we doing in this? Like some puzzle solving? There's a little bit of puzzle solving. There's also ghost combat. Yes. Um, and these ghosts take a little, a few hits to put down, honestly. You're going to have to whack this ghost lady a few times <laughs> in the face with your paper lantern. Just whack her. Um, so, you know, it lights up when the ghost is nearby, which kind of gives you an indication something creepy is about to happen. Yeah. She could come from the wall behind you. Sometimes, the, like she reached through the floor one time. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's um, it's very creepy when it happens because you don't know where she's coming from. Yeah. Uh, but also, it seems a little bit cheap sometimes because if you're For too sure. close to a wall, she can absolutely come through that wall. And, and sometimes like, she's like on you when she comes in, and you're like, "Get back, so I can hit you with the, yeah. the paper lantern." But so. these ghosts are like, I think, very cool looking. Like in yeah. terms of like design from a design standpoint. Well, from an atmosphere kind of just design in general, everything is sufficiently creepy in just the right kind of way. Yeah. Um, you will be reminded, obviously, of like the ring or any of these kind of classic. There's a lot of hair. There's, There's a lot of black hair everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of a familiar look, but it's really well done here, I think. Yeah. And over and over, I kept being like, this just this just reeks of fatal frame for me. Ah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, although classic. In all fairness, much shorter than any Fatal Frame game ever made. And you don't take pictures. You don't. So No, it's about two hours long. Uh, just puzzle solving, a little bit of combat, a lot of uh, atmospheric stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, some of the puzzles really, really straightforward. You pick up something and you find a place for it. And then some of it, you'll find yourself getting really hung up on puzzles that 
once you solve them, you go, why did that just take me two hours? It should have taken yeah, me five minutes. Exactly. So I think that's a good puzzle because mm. once you've beaten it, you go, oh, I totally should have gotten that faster. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was maybe one where I was like, uh, I could have gotten this faster if you'd helped me out a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, it was obvious, I guess, in retrospect. Yeah. So maybe my fault. Probably my fault. So People Wandering came out January 18th, 2018. came out uh, by Oriental Pearl Culture. Okay. Uh, again, completely in English. Uh, I love, however, on the store, it says, in quotes, Asia-style horrible VR game, <laughs> which is just a luckily hor- it's bad not. translation. Yeah, luckily it's not a horrible game. It's a horror um, game. And for the price, which was around ten dollars, you yeah, said right? eighty Hong Kong dollars, which is about ten bucks. And that's, I think, it's a really good experience for that price. Yeah. Um, I like the atmosphere a lot. The sound design is also pretty good. Very good. Um, you get those sort of, I don't know, the scare that comes from not something jumping in your face, but like a little bit of a, what's that? There's something creeping, and then you go around a corner and you see a brief, you know, image of a, a yeah. spirit or something that doesn't just get you right but it's it builds the tension really definitely, well definitely a little moments like that that give you the chills and you go yeah. oh geez all right i gotta push forward keep keep going yeah for sure yeah um again move controllers only uh and yeah i think that's i think that's kind of it for this one Pretty much covers uh, it I, we're gonna still use our, our standard rating scale for this uh one is you have to buy this thing uh it's awesome it's amazing uh two is yeah if it's on sale or you really like the genre it's right up your alley awesome go get it uh, or three is absolutely not. This is garbage. Yeah. It's stay far, far away. Friends don't let friends buy junk, crap. I was gonna shitty say trash, games, but trash. Yeah, you were I don't, on the same I, page. I forgot what the yeah, normal word let's just was. Just say shit. Don't friends shit. don't let friends buy shit. No shit for you yeah, guys. No shit. Uh, Dave, what do you rate? So uh, this one wondering? is an interesting one, and I think I might come down this way on a few of the games that we talk about here yeah. because it is kind of a niche thing. You gotta jump through some hoops to get it, mm-hmm. and like you said, it's like. Two hours ish. Yeah. So it's not a big uh, must have kind of flagship PSVR title. Right. But what it does, it does really well. So with the two, if you are a fan of the genre and this is something you want to check out, if this looks cool to you, I would totally recommend it. Yeah. It's not something everybody needs to have, but it's well worth it if you're into it. So that means it's a two. And I'm also going to give it a two, but I'm going to give it a super crazy strong two. Very strong. Like I consider giving this a one. And the reason is, is really? because it's so cheap. It is. Ten it, bucks, yeah. Right? It's so cheap. We've definitely seen much less impressive games like No Way Out doing, you know, <laughs> yeah, that 20... are less scary, less interactive, less fun More uh, for expensive. twice as much money. Yeah. You know, so this is like, I mean, and, and the only reason is because I know not everyone loves horror games. And, you know, if you do love horror games, you have to get all of them. You know, so yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of your thing. <laughs> I must yeah. play every single horror game ever. Released. I mean, I got to play every PSVR game. Ever well, released, yeah, but, but horror specifically. You really like the horror ones. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. I, if I could only play horror games for the rest of my life, I'd be a very happy camper. Yeah. Yeah. For ten dollars, this is about the strongest two gets. Keep in mind, it is episode one, so it falls into that category of PSVR games we're never going to see part yeah, two of. Absolutely. Um, it's possible, but I doubt it. Yeah. I, I really hope that we get it someday, though. Yeah, it'd be yeah. cool to see more of it. Yeah. Moving right along, though, because we've got two more games to cover. Uh, Dave, what is the second game? This is a real strange one. I love it. Um, it's called Kowloon's Gate VR Suzaku. And this was originally, it's kind of a remake-ish of an old PlayStation game called yeah. Kowloon's Gate that has sort of a cult following um, because the city of Kowloon's Gate, which is a real place, um, was this very unique kind of, it's called the Walled City. And it was just like, you couldn't see the sky. It was very dense very dingy, um, kind of grungy and like yeah. sp- spooky in a way. You know, Do we know why it was walled off? I don't actually know. I now just, I'm curious. Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore as far as I know. I think they tore it down or got rid of it somehow. Um, but it was just like one of those kind of modern wonders of like, how did this shit happen? Like, <laughs> yeah. who came up with this? And can you imagine living in this place? Like, I feel like I'm not terribly far off in my current situation. <laughs> just in the dark all, yeah, the, just time. all the time. time. Yeah, there's yeah. walls everywhere. Like, like, really, nothing would change if there were just suddenly walls outside of my building. <laughs> I wouldn't know. No, yeah. I wouldn't know the difference yeah. at all. And um, we never see the sky anyways between the two of us. So. so you mentioned this was a PlayStation 1 game originally. Yeah. Now, the remake is done by the same team that made the PlayStation 1, and it was crowdfunded. Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome because, uh, you know, get it. I don't, I, there's so, so often you see PlayStation 1 developers have di- disappeared over the years. Yeah. You know, so it's cool that they've come back and actually recreated something that was, you know, pretty cool on the original PlayStation. Um, but, but they've done something with this that I've never seen in any other PlayStation VR game. And that is they force you to remove your headset yeah. pretty regularly. It's part of the mechanic. So you walk up to these stations, um, 
stations where you have to <laughs> it tells you it. Yeah. yeah you have to take your headset off and then you do some stuff on the screen mm-hmm. and then when you jump back in you put it back on yeah. and at first you're like what is this about this is weird I don't, i've never seen this i don't know if i like this but once you start settling in it's kind of like fine like it didn't bother me too much eventually um and it's a quirk this is a very quirky game overall so really really quirky not surprised that this is a quirk because there's you basically a lot of... co- collect shrimp as currency i mean how quirky yes, can you get? you do yeah. and you have to take pictures do you want to talk about that because i know you're a big fail frame guy we just mentioned it yep and this is where that comparison comes in again nice yeah well so when you're taking off your vr headset what you're seeing on the social screen is an image Mm-hmm. And you're kind of like, I don't even know what that is sometimes. Sometimes it's obvious it's a, a kind of a staircase or something that leads yeah. to a door or whatever. But sometimes you're like, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. And then when you put your headset back on, you kind of like matrix your way back into the Kowloon's mm-hmm. Gate world. And then it's sort of a just where's Waldo situation yeah. where you just explore uh, this ever widening expanse. Yeah. Right? Where you just like, so, so you start off and you're just like in this back alley and like eventually one hallway, a, a door just, opens. Yeah. Like, and then every time you go back in, it feels like the city opens up slightly more. Yeah, it's kind of a cool progression system once you yeah. figure out what you're actually doing. And so eventually, it gets really, really hard to find that thing you're looking for on the social screen because you're looking through so much of the city. Mm-hmm. And once you find it, and or you think you find it at least, you have to kind of get into the right pr- place. you got to line it up just so. Yeah, yeah, to actually kind of recreate the photograph you were shown with your headset off. Yeah. Take a picture, and then you're kind of good to go. And then a shrimp pops out, and, and then you get the shrimp. Out. And as you get more shrimp, like you said, the areas expand a little bit. You open a new door. Um, a creepy guy will walk past you who you've never seen before, and you're yeah. like, maybe I'll go where he's going, you know? Yeah. One, one of the creepy guys uh, in particular. So <laughs> when, when, when Dave first discovered this game, uh, and then I kind of piggybacked on his discovery. And I, did... I just told him, you have to check this out. Yeah. Like, I know you love Fatal Frame, and this is so weird. And so unique on PlayStation VR that, and it's kind of not horror, but it's spooky. I mean, it's it, creepy. There's it's this, about as creepy as it gets without yeah, being horror. Yeah, that atmospheric, but not. There's no jump scares or anything like that, as far as I can remember. I don't think there were. I don't, I don't think there are. Yeah, I don't think there are. But it does. It, like the but the 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 soundtrack and everything, and the graphical style, it just feels like it keeps you on your toes. Yeah, you feel like you're just like I don't know what's going on around here, and I don't know if these other characters are capable of interacting with me. Like, there's just so many questions that, like, even in my original review, I kept it very, very vague. Yeah. Um, one of the characters, though, during we so I did a I did a live stream after Dave uh, recommended this game to me, and I thought I was just gonna do a first impression stream. Eight hours later, <laughs> I ended up finishing the yeah. game live, and with like all these a ton of game cats watching, and we were just and, and we discovered a character. That we all sort of fell in love with the moment we saw him. And what kind of love did we fall in him with? We fell in love with some candy love. Candy love. Now, if you guys <laughs> have kept up with the channel or you know the Discord, we've got a we've got a candy love emoji for yeah. good reason. He became like a crowd favorite. Like I wouldn't say he's the mascot by any means of no. parole, but he's in the running. Yeah. Um, if you need a short description, he's a shirtless. A uh, very rotund man. Mm-hmm. He has a hole where he got a tracheotomy, I guess. Seems to be a tracheotomy And he hole. keeps sticking a lollipop in it. And that's, I don't know, he's not licking it. He's just sticking it in his little hole. Yeah. And if you go around the back of him, he's got this big tattoo that says Candy Love on the back. So, so we assume that's his name. That's got to be his name. Or maybe that's his mom's name. Maybe. She, oh, she maybe. died for in remembrance of his mom. You it's know. very possible. You know, some people get tracheotomies because they have consumed uh, too many cigarettes. And now, you know, they, they you know, got, got that stuff to deal Some with. Some people consume too many lollipops. I and then feel their like throat is just busted. There's something along the same lines. Yeah. He, he's too many lollipops instead of too many cigarettes. Yeah. And there's no way to know because you don't talk to these people. No. You just see them and they unsettle you in some ways. And you're just like, well, he's walking around over there. Uh, I guess I won't bother him. Yeah. That's Candy Love. Let him do his own thing. And when it, when it all kind of comes down to it, you look at this game and you go, especially once you've finished, you go, this game was really very simple you know oh, the, yeah the there's not a lot is, to it is straightforward right so uh so this game goes for 154 hong kong dollars so a little over 20 bucks oh and i i did i already say that um it's out in japan and hong kong but make sure you get the hong kong version because the japanese one has no translation right. um so i don't know if it says english on the the hong kong store but it is in english and uh totally playable yes yeah, don't accidentally buy the wrong one in other words yeah yeah. Uh, so what, what, what do we say on this? Uh, one, two, or three? This is a weird one, once again, because I feel like uh, people should experience it. It's yeah. strange. If you're into 
something totally different than anything else we have on VR. And we've played a lot of horror games, a lot of wave shooters, a lot of this, a lot of that. But there is nothing like fucking Kowloon's Gate. This really thing not. is bonkers. Yeah. And it doesn't tell you much about itself and kind of lets you piece it together as you go, mm. which kind of plays into this whole sense of mystery and it's uh, vague. You know, you said you kept it vague, but it is kind of vague about itself. Yeah. Um, you just sort of try to piece together what you can in your head. Um, I want to give it a one. I'm going to give it a such a strong two. Like you said, a very strong two. Um, you know, the gameplay is not crazy deep. There's right. nothing insane to it. And it's it's pretty lengthy, though. It's like seven, eight hours, seven or eight like you hours, said. Yeah. Um, which, for 20 bucks, not bad. And such a cool environment to explore. And I would say if people know about the actual Kowloon's Gate that existed, yeah. it's such an interesting story of a place. And to be able to experience it firsthand in virtual reality, it's very well recreated. Um, the atmosphere is great. So yeah. super strong, too. I'm going to... So this is kind of what I want to do with people, but I do feel like this is more of a fully fleshed out game it because is. of its length. Yeah. And and man, the city is just so much fun to explore. And you do have to occasionally, we didn't say this, you have to occasionally backtrack on small levels to go find extra shrimp to, to continue forward. To move forward. forward, yeah. And so uh, because of that, I'm going to give it a very, very weak one. Fair. Right? I mean, I could flip either way on that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and, and I just think, you know, for, for the amount of game you're getting out of the seven or eight hours, you know, 20 bucks, you don't find that very often, uh, especially with such a cool atmosphere. I uh, love the graphics in this. I love yeah. the sound effects. It is just so weird, and I love every second of it. Um, very and I, weak one. I think I might have gotten the price wrong. Did I get the price wrong? Because I was thinking of the next game we're about to talk about, so know. correct me if I was wrong. I don't know if it's 21 bucks. Yeah, it's whatever. close. It's in the ballpark. It's around 20 bucks. 154 Hong, Hong Kong, Kong dollars. HKD. So what is, what's our last game then? This is a game called Horror Sense VR, and this is only in the Japanese store. And it's kind of a cool story because uh, Koei Tecmo, the developer, has this VR Sense arcade unit where they have all sorts of like, uh, for, in this one, for instance, they'll like blow wind at you, certain scares and like right. a rustling feeling on your back. It's kind of one of those like 4D experiences you'd see at a theme park but in a little self-contained VR unit. And thus the name Horror Sense. Sense. It has that extra sensory stuff to yeah, the exactly. game. In the arcade. In Japan only. Yes, and they also have like Dynasty Warriors ones right. and like various other stuff that I hope that they bring because I'd love to see some of these. Oh, um, sure. And they're not all the same kind of genre. Obviously, this is sort of its own thing gameplay-wise. Yeah. But um, cool that they brought it to the PSVR. Uh, this one came out on uh, January 25th of this year, 2019, uh, for... 2,138 yen. Again, roughly 20 bucks, maybe a little bit That's more than what 20 I was thinking, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is DualShock 4 only. It is. And Dave, not that it really matters because there's very little you actually control in this. But I'll tell you about it. Please do. So um, <laughs> you are a character who is moving down a spooky hallway spooky. and scary things happen as you go. And the only thing you can do is move forward. Yeah. So there's only one button it's X. You hold down X and you move forward. But it's got kind of this um, almost like child's gameplay sort of like uh, hide and seek sort of thing. Like when the it's like red light, green light, red light. That's much better. That's actually what it is. That's it's actually, red exactly light, green light, and X is green light. Yeah, and you go. And if you don't know how to pronounce the name of this game before you start playing it, by the time you're done playing it, you are going to have it ingrained in your head. Yeah. Because the little creepy girl at the end of the hallway that's playing red light, green light with you is saying in Japanese. Do you want to do it together? Yeah. Daruma Sanga Koronda. Da. But and sometimes she goes, Daruma Sanga Koronda, and right. you don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> so you're used to this certain pattern, and then right. she'll just. Right. Yeah. So you walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. She's got her back turned to you, and then she like kind of cre creepy turn her head, mm -hmm. like that weird, you know, uh, Asian horror film style. Yeah. Of, yeah. Weird body contortions. And along the way, you know, there are. Resident Evil style hands popping out oh, of the wall. Absolutely, issue. bugs crawling over your face. There are a lot of really cool scares in here. Very um, cool. And they do sort of, um, they don't change too much within a replay of the same level, but right. there's three different levels that you progress through, and those have different scares as you go. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're basically, when her back turned to you, just to make sure we really drive home the gameplay here, you're holding down that button, so you're walking as close to her as you possibly mm -hmm. can. And, and and then as soon as she says the last syllable of Daruma Sanga Koranda, mm. you like let go and you could stop. And you're on a timer, aren't you? You are, which you... makes the entire thing extremely time sensitive. Yes, and yeah. nerve wracking, yes. and sort of 
extra terrifying because you're like, I need to do this as fast as possible. But if you go like two steps further than you were supposed to, yeah, she got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. that's it. It's game. Oh, she's coming for you. It's gonna be scary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, now there's uh, there's a little bit more to the gameplay. There are like notes, right? Things yeah. Find. As you as you go through, you pick up little pieces of. Um, and what's the point of all of that? I don't remember. Yeah. I don't really know. There's so, not much of a point. <laughs> this one, I will say, of the three, does not have an English uh, translation. Doesn't help anything. It's in Japanese, but you just press X. Yeah. So you get scared, you press X, you do it again. Yeah. You don't need subtitles yeah. um, for the most part. And you need to beat... There's three levels. You need to beat each level to progress to the next one, mm-hmm. uh, which is more difficult than it sounds. Oh, very difficult. I never got to the third one. Oh, the third... And the third one's just insane. Like, the, it, it gets... I mean, the first one's like you're just like in kind of like a haunted house type environment. Yeah. And then by the third one, it's like crazy over-the-top psychological, just weird stuff everywhere. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Right? And it's just like a kind of like a, a visual overload. Too much like visual stimulus all over the place. But in a good way. Now, my biggest complaint about this, uh, I guess twofold. Okay. One, it's... There's not a lot of stuff here. No, it's it does exactly what it does. There's no alternate modes. There's not okay. beyond just getting more stages. There's no unlocks or changes to the gameplay. You just hold X and you move forward. But it's it rings so much attention out of that yeah. simple gameplay loop. But right. I feel like for the price, I think that's where I was going with this. Yeah, is that yeah, yeah. It needs like maybe two or three extra levels or something. Like you really need to be rewarded for having completed the first three. Yeah, it's an arcade game. I get it. But the other part about that is it's an arcade game. Why is why are the cutscenes unskippable? There's like a, a cutscene you have to watch before yeah, you play the first level over true. and over. That is true. It's like it's an arcade game. Why can't I just jump into the game? I agree with you on both of those points. It's a little expensive and that is sort of... It gets a little tiring to have to... Because you will die. You will certainly die in this oh, um, absolutely. plenty of times. So you'll see that intro cutscene <laughs> on the first times. stage um, quite a lot. It's, it's not a bad cutscene. I don't know what they're saying. No, it's, but it's, it's a few teenagers that are all like seemingly daring each other to go yeah. into a house, uh, and then one gets trapped in. You kind of all have to go get, go look for him. I think I tried to translate it once, and I couldn't exactly figure out what they were talking about. But um, I think it's like an elementary school that they're breaking into for some reasons, but I don't know what they are. And with any horror game, the reasons are inconsequential as long Pretty as much, you're in yeah. the in the situation you're in. That's all that really matters. What would you give this game a one, two, or three? Like you said, it's hard to give it a one. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it because once again, it's one of those unique experiences. Like, yeah. and it does feel arcadey in a way, um, but also just like it's so simple, but effective. And the scares are really good. They're kind of jump scary, but the tension of the Daruma Sanga, yeah. and that will be stuck in my head forever. Like, if you have nightmares about stuff, you will have Darus whatever yeah. like nightmares. Um, it's very um strong as far as like the presentation and, yeah. and the way it sticks with you after you play it yeah i mean we didn't even but, say how amazing the graphics are like they are some yeah high they're quality really good graphics they look stunning for what they are yeah and if you watch any videos you might not see that because it's very dark mm-hmm. but in the headset it looks great yeah. um i can't give it a one because it's too expensive like yeah. you said and it's too simple um i'm gonna say a middle two yeah i because i think if you're into horror you should try this out. It's a very fun kind of, I don't want to say like a throwaway game because I don't think it's a throwaway game, but it's its slight. You know, it's not a big adventure or anything, but um, there's something to it. So I would say there's something to it. It's a two. Okay. Well, I got something to add to that. I think this game is so accessible and so easy for oh, anyone to play. I didn't that Since that. it really only requires you turning your head and pushing one button... That that I think in my review I actually said that this is a better first VR experience than even Ocean's Descent because yeah, yeah. it's actually something to do, but it requires so little on your part that yeah. be, if the price I mean I wish the price was like just a few dollars less like if it's fifteen instead of twenty ish you know I'd be like oh but I'm still gonna give this a one wow I'm blown away okay this yeah. is good well here's the thing I think the other two games are more fun. Right, but they are, but they certainly require you to love horror. They require you to like, you know, the other one, take, take up your VR headset. You know, yeah, there's a lot, there's of, a lot of moving parts. Yeah. yeah, and puzzle solving and pupil can definitely be tough. This is so accessible that I think everyone out there should own it because everyone should put their mom in this game yeah. and film it and send it to me. <laughs> that is a good idea. That's one of those. It's just one of those classic moments in VR where you're like, man, 
Like, hey, Grandma, I'm, try this out. You've got to see this, because yeah. it's going to kill you. <laughs> and she's going to say, why are they talking in Japanese? I don't right. understand. And you say, just right. sit, sit there for a minute. Just hang out. You just press this little button here, Mom. Yep. It'll all be fine, Mom. Yeah. 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 Bye, Mom. Yeah. Definitely a better choice than Drive Club. I'm so sorry. I really didn't mean to do that to you. Oh, <laughs> oh, she threw up all over the place. Life. Damn yeah. it. Well, she was sick for two days. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, that was a nice little bonus Halloween episode of uh, yeah. Why We Love PSVR. And, of course, you know, some games that didn't maybe didn't deserve a full episode on their own. But uh, we definitely wanted to talk about it, definitely wanted to cover. Make sure they're on the radar. People know about this stuff. Because it'd be so easy to overlook them. They're not even in the store that you look at, usually. So, And this is like, as far as Dave and I go, this is our bread and butter. So that we thought this yeah. was the perfect episode for us to do together. Because, I mean, we've been like kind of hunting down Japanese imports for our entire lives. Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, this totally works. So go check out these games. All of them are definitely worthwhile to some degree or another. And, uh, and happy Halloween, everybody. Let us know what you thought of these games down below in the comments. And uh, also what you want us to talk about in next week's episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. As always, my name is Brian Paul. I'm Spooky Dave. <laughs> Happy Halloween, folks. And we'll see you next week.